The following activities will help you become more familiar with maps and how they are used to determine locations. You will be presented with several important terms and ideas related to understanding and reading them. We have started this lesson yesterday in class and the beginning of the next few slides will be a brief overview and then we will go into longitude and latitude which is what our objective is for this lesson to learn the lines of longitude and latitude and how they relate to a map. Okay, we all know that the Earth is a rotating ball in space. It is quite large. It has a circumference of about 40,000 kilometers. How far is that? Well, for an average person, walking 24 hours a day, now with so much land and water to navigate around, how can someone know where to find locations? Over time, methods have been developed to help us find our way from place to place. We all know that the world is a sphere. It's shaped like a ball. We use scale models of these called globes to represent the Earth. The problem with globes is that they are bulky and not very practical for everyday use. So it's so much easier to use what map makers call a map projection. By the way, map makers are known as cartographers. A projection is a flat, usually paper version of the real thing, much like we have in our textbooks. This is a Mercator map projection of the globe. Now remember yesterday we talked about mer being part relating to water, mermaid, mercator is the type of map that's used for navigation, the kinds that ships use to navigate the seas, the waters. We can describe the earth as being divided into two equal parts, two, hemi. These parts are called hemispheres. Hemispheres, hemispheres. These halves can be described as the northern hemisphere, the color in yellow, or the southern hemisphere, the color in blue. They can also be labeled as the western hemisphere, the color in yellow, and the eastern hemisphere, the color in blue. An imaginary line is drawn on a map dividing the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. This is that imaginary line. And that imaginary line, you know, is called the equator. The vertical lines that divide the Earth into two equal parts and run north and south along the north and south poles are called meridians, mer again, water, meridians. Unlike the equator, there are many meridians. Any line that runs through both poles is called a meridian. The line dividing west from east is called the prime meridian. Prime means first or most important. The prime meridian passes through the city of Greenwich, England. Okay, practice questions. Click on the correct answer to proceed. So you will have to go to the video to review this. Once you do, you're going to click on your answers and um, I think you have about four questions. So you want to follow this link, which is in Edmodo in order to continue this. And you can review this again also. Enjoy. Okay, let's lay a grid over our map of the Earth. The vertical and horizontal lines have their own names. The lines that run from left to right are called lines of latitude. This is what they look like in the green. They run from left 
to right. These are lines of latitude. Okay. The equator is the line of latitude at the center of the map. It's in red. This is the equator. The lines that run top to bottom are called lines of longitude. Lines of longitude are meridians. The prime meridian is a line of longitude. The prime meridian is the line of longitude that divides the east and the west. This is the prime meridian. This is longitude. When I think of longitude, I think of long. And this is latitude. This is the equator. When you think of the equator, think of lat as in flat. They're lines that are flat and longitude are long. So lat, flat, longitude, long lines. A way to remember the difference between longitude and latitude is the following rhyme. The flat lines are the lat lines. Now let's examine how to use these lines to find specific locations on a map. The basic unit for measurement on a map is a degree, and this is the symbol for degree. Starting at a point on starting at a point on the equator and following the lines gives you a total of 360 degrees. So if you went all the way this way, this way, you'd have a total of 360 degrees. This means that each hemisphere half of the earth has 180 degrees measured either west from the midpoint which is here or measured east from the midpoint this is the midpoint right here where the equator and the prime meridian intersect that would be the midpoint okay it looks a bit like a number line the degree marks on the equator will tell you um, the number of lines and how the longitude and latitude lines intersect. This map shows points of longitude every 15 degrees. So this is the scale. It's 15 degrees. This way, 15, 45, 75. 15 degrees. Okay. No, I'm sorry. This is 15. 15. Then this would be 30, 45. So it shows you every 15 degrees. To move 45 degrees west, we follow the equator. So here's the equator. And you move three points to the left. This is 30, this is 60. So between 30 and 60 is 45. Remember, each line is 15 degrees. 30, 45, 60. To move 60 degrees east, we follow the equator again. Let's go straight to the equator. That's, this is always the starting point. And move four points to the right. And again, this would be 60 degrees east. This is east. You started where the lines intersect, the prime meridian and the equator. You're moving to 60 degrees east. Okay. We use the letter W to mean west and east to mean and E to mean east. Moving up and down from the equator, we use the lines of latitude. This is the equator. To move up or down, we use the lines of latitude. Okay, we might move south 15 degrees or north 30 degrees. 
that would be 30 degrees north, two points above. We use the letter N to mean north and the letter S to mean south like we did on our compass rows. Since the map shows both sides and faces of the earth at the same time, a map allows us to go 90 degrees north or south. All right, let's see what you can do. And once again, you're going to go back to this, to this recording and you're going to answer these questions. Click on the equator at 30 degrees west. So now is your opportunity to go in and practice. Follow the link in Edmodo to go in and practice this for yourselves. When you're finished, come back to this video. Okay, now it's time to put the two together. By combining the use of latitude and longitude, we can find any location on the planet. Location points look like this. 35 degrees north, 27 degrees east. For points on the map that fall between grid lines, we must, we must make guesses, approximate, educated guesses. We have to estimate. Okay, for example, 53 degrees is about halfway between 45 and 60 degrees. So, if we're looking at the degrees, here's 45, here's 60 degrees. So, depending on east or, or west, but let's look at east. So, 55 would have to be somewhere between somewhere less than 60 degrees. So it would be between 30 and 60, but next to 30 would be 45 because these run every 15 degrees. So maybe 50, maybe 50, maybe 60. Sixty is here, so maybe fifty-three somewhere in here. Have to estimate. When finding a location, always start with the line of latitude. Always start with the line of latitude. It's the first line, just like the XY, first the X, then the Y. First you run, then you fly. So latitude. Always start with that line first. When finding a location, always start with the line of latitude again. So for our example, 35 degrees north and 27 degrees east, we need to move 30 to 35 degrees up from the equator. So that's the latitude. And then we're going to move to the right. 27 degrees. Now again, we have 30. We don't have 27, so we have to get as close to 30 as we can. So we found our point, and it's indicated by the flashing red dot. So let's review the steps we take to find a location and try some exercises of our own. Steps to find a location. Number one. Begin at the point where the prime meridian and the equator intersect. Move north, which is up, or south, which is down, the indicated number of degrees. 35 degrees, 27 degrees, 55 degrees, whatever the number of degrees is. You move north, up, or south, down. From that point, while still on the prime meridian, move west to the left or east to the right, the number of degrees. So let's try a few questions. Click on the map in the following locations. Question 1. This is 35 degrees north, 90 degrees east. So once again, you're going to go in and practice this for yourself. The link is in Edmodo. Once you have completed it, come back to the video.